Maybe we should uh, begin with a few questions about uh, meningitis and the needed education so that uh, we stay uh, safe. And I understand that um, Mr. Siedu Bequing, who is head of disease and surveillance of the Ghana Health uh, Service, uh, is joining us on the phone lines. They've been going around the country monitoring and ensuring that the necessary things are done so that we do not record more numbers. But, well, the numbers appear to continue to rise in uh, as the weeks go by. We've, just, we've done only three weeks or so into the outbreak, is it? And about 50 so far. Uh, good morning, and thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Bequing. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Now, Good morning. Right. Now, we, we understand that so far, uh, through the minister's uh, briefing of uh, parliament, the health minister's briefing of the parliament's committee, that the pneumococcal meningitis, which we understand has killed about 50 people so far in less than a month, uh, we have recorded 246 cases that have been reported in the BA, in the Ashanti region, in the northern region, upper east region. We are told of a 16-year-old boy, a very harrowing situation, who was killed by the disease in the eastern region. In Accra, we are told of three now. Um, wh why is it that we are having it in regions that we're not expected to uh, be recording this uh, disease? Um, <clears throat> thank you very much. Yes, I, I think for the past week, when we had the press briefing, we tried to explain that uh, meningitis is not one of the unknown diseases. Mm. Let's say um, for Ebola or yellow fever. Mm. But I did not expect to have any case in the country at a point in time. Meningitis is somehow endemic in Ghana. So if you try to look at our health data over the period, you see that meningitis has been reported in all regions over the period in time. The difference is that this year, the cases occurred in Bronhafo, which is not a typical meningitis region. In the time past, we have the meningitis belt, which is mainly covering Upper East, Upper West, and North region. Mm. So cases have been common in such areas. But the data clearly shows that there have been reports of meningitis in all regions over the period of time going with that. So it is not unusual to find a case of meningitis in any region in Ghana. Mm. But we, we, we thought that in, in a very you know, normal way, like we had a cerebrospinal meningitis, its uh, CSM has been known to hit the, the northern part of the country only. Um, it hit us in 1994, in 1996, killing about 1,000 people out of the 17,000 that uh, were affected. So how do you explain that we, we shouldn't expect that it will affect other parts of the country? Because we know that this grows in the really hot regions, and we are talking about the northern region and the two upper regions. And let me explain that um, meningitis is actually caused, um, bacterial meningitis mm. is actually caused by three main um, organisms. The, the CSM that I talked about called Nicelia. Mm -hmm. And that Nicelia has several types. You have A, C, W135, Y, X, several of them. So, but the, the predominant one was the A. So, looking at our data, the government decided that we need to do a mass vaccination campaign, which was done in 2012. Following that, we realized that the burden of meningitis in country dropped. So, like for 2013, we realized the total country numbers were around 450. Mm. But the, the vaccination using men A now allowed the other organism to pop up. So now you have C, W135. And then this church pneumonia. It brings to bear that the threat of meningitis is real. 
particularly during the, the, the dry periods from October to March. For this outbreak, what we are stressing on is that the main issue is about early detection of the disease and case management. If the infection or the outbreak was due to meningococcal, and it's a clear vaccination that is done mass, that's the CSM. For step pneumonia or the meningococcal um, meningitis that we have, the main still is not vaccination. The main still is about early detection and effective case management. Let me say that though meningitis is a very fatal condition, because it's bacteria, and we have effective antibiotics available. Early reporting does not lead to fatality. And there are clear examples in this outbreak. In Sunny West, they reported 11 cases, nobody is dead. In Kwanza South, has reported 17 cases, nobody is dead. Mm. So let me also put that on, on, on record. When we had a press briefing, we said that by our expectation, is increasing awareness. We expect to have increasing number of cases reported, which is good for the health system. I see. What we also expect that there will be less death. Mm. And clearly the data is showing that we have more cases being reported and the deaths are going down. So Ghanaians should be very assured that the health system is awake and they will have to address the challenge. Okay. Now, now Doc, um, explain to me again um, why is it that we understand that there, there was this, um, is it uh, Afri, Afri, Afri Mag, uh, this sort of, uh, you know, drug that, that was made and for which a lot of uh, immunization was expected? That's the, the men Afrivac, the men Afrivac. We understand that um, the, the meningitis belts in Africa, including about 26 countries, including Ghana, uh, some already started, you know, using the drug. And for example, in Burkina Faso, uh, after they started using it in 2011, 2012, thereabout, now they are recording almost zero, zero meningitis cases. Um, Ghana is supposed to have also, you know, been doing this somewhere in 2012. So what, what, what went wrong? Why is it that we are now having these numbers? Yes, as I said, nothing went wrong. You see, I tried to state earlier that there are three main bacteria causing meningitis. Mm -hmm. It's tumorphilus influenza, which is not very common in this um, part now. Then we have the streptococcus pneumonia, or the one that you, what you call it, pneumococcal meningitis. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Neisseria meningitis. That one has several serotypes. <laughs> you have A, C, W135, right. X, mm -hmm. Y, B. But then the, the type that was causing most, most of the outbreaks in Ghana was the A. So that's why they did the men Africa vaccination to address the burden due to meningococcal type A. So that is why Ghana's burden has stopped. So currently, this outbreak, you are seeing W135, Nigeria type C, and then Trips pneumonia, which is not addressed by the early outbreak. So the vaccination has actually achieved a purpose by dropping infection due to men type A. But then it has not spread other organisms, including W135, mm. Nigeria type A and then it's pneumonia. All right. Uh, Dr. Say Dubekwe, again, we, we were told when 18 people died that we should not panic. When 32 died, we were told not to panic. 50 have died, or even the number has increased by this uh, morning, I don't know. We still should not panic. Why? Yes, um, the disease is actually spread by yeah, respiratory droplets. So, so far as people are moving and getting close contact with others, there is a, a threat. And also the weather is um, a predisposing factor to the current situation. Mm. But what has changed is that now there's heightened awareness. 
Okay. Everybody's talking about Nimokoka, Maningaji, Nimokoka, Maningaji. So now, Ghana more going to have a talent, whether for someone has fever, headache, and neck pain, and think it's malaria, and you go and take his own medication. Now, everybody's rushing to the hospital. Also, the clinicians are also high alert. The medicine you diagnose what is common. Let's say in the time past at the periphery, when you go to the health facility and you say you have fever, headache, neck pain, the clinician with the community of nurse will diagnose malaria and teach you using a test and what Now, you suspect meningitis and refer to the nurse center. So that's why I said that we expect more increasing number of cases, mm. but less fatalities. And now we're also preaching seriously on the need to make sure that we avoid close contact with persons who are sneezing and coughing, and persons who are so sneezing and coughing to ensure that they have an etiquette to cover their noses and mouth so that they know spread the, the bacteria to others. Those who get it, those who get it, we understand. Those who get it, who are infected themselves, often do not know that they have it. How am I supposed to know that someone else has it so that I avoid them? No, you see, um, the bacteria is actually um, in the throat of persons who may not be even having the disease. Mm. So what I'm saying is that when somebody is sneezing, you need to keep a distance of more than one meter apart. Okay. Because the, the, the bacteria cannot travel that distance. Okay. We're also saying that the person who is sneezing often must exercise the etiquette of covering the nose and the mouth. So All right. not spread the mm. bacteria. Okay. So that's what we are saying. Clearly, you cannot look at somebody's face and say, this is my daddy's face. Mm -hmm. And also, persons who are even ill are less likely to really spread the disease. So, because the, the bacteria lives as a no, normal bacteria in certain individuals that can be transferred to others. Okay. Um, so, as we understand now, you are doing awareness creation all over the country. Um, Apart from this sign you have given that people sneezing, you know, should learn to, you know, be ethical about how they go about sneezing and also others should stay away from them and all of that. Uh, what's, what should we look out for? What other symptoms should we look out for so that we can protect each other? Okay, thank you. Um, basically, the, the cardinal signs of symptoms, fever. So if you use your thermometer, you are looking at 38 degrees Celsius or above. You have headache, persistent headache. Then you have neck pain. Then it becomes stiff, so you cannot bend your head, your head down. You may have confusion. Then you become cautious. In children, there's, well, there's what they call the anterior frontal nerve. There is uh, an opening at the front part of children. That place becomes bulging. So those are the signs that you look for. Okay. And then let me also stress that since this outbreak, um, started, the government has put in place a lot, a lot of measures. Yes, a lot of the money has been given to the regions, as well BA and then um, Bali district. There's also been a supply of antibiotics by key um, entities, including the government itself. Because, as I said, it's a bacterial infection, so very effective antibiotics mm. leads to a cure. When you have the disease, normally, you're going to have the course of the disease between 10 to 14 days. Okay. So if you report any, maximum two weeks, you're fine to go. And then there's also, we are also grateful to people like you, your mm. media, mm -hmm. that you are spreading the awareness to all categories of PFS that the disease has a high case fatality. But if you report any, they are not likely to die. So I think that the disease has come, there's a threat due to the weather, but with increasing awareness, People reporting early, cases be managed, and then everything will be fine. But right. the test will stay mm. up to match. So mm. what we are going to do, we do as a ministry, is that we will be releasing um, regular updates maybe every two days, so that we have a, a clear idea of what is happening in country. Mm. We mm. have analyzed the, the data of the districts, and clearly if you look at the data by weekly, we realize that there's a, there's a sudden reduction in the number of cases in the weeks. Okay. So we think that the, the effort put, being put in place is working. The WHO team is on the floor. They are returning today, and the report they are saying is that there is a lot of activity going on in the regions. Right. There's a lot of involvement of all key stakeholders, 
this 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 uh, pneumococcal meningitis sounds like our own uh, Ebola of sorts. Why why are you not quarantining people who are getting it, or you are doing so? No no no, you don't need to do that. As like I said, persons who have, who are even ill have a life chance of really spreading it. So you do not you do not need that kind of um, protection um, to to prevent to to get a disease. All right. You see, it, so this one is a different organism from the Ebola mm. because the literature is very clear that no health worker has actually gotten a disease by treating another another person. Mm. So the disease has high fatality, but it does not easily transmit to another person. Particularly when the patient is ill. Mm. I was just making the comparison because of the the, the the speed with which it kills, just like Ebola does, you know. Um, uh, but uh, kindly recap again for us the symptoms that we should look out for and what we should do to avoid it. Okay, thank you. The, the main symptoms is fever. So fever of 38 degrees Celsius and above. Mm -hmm. Then there's headache, persistent headache. Then there's neck pain, which may become stiff. So you cannot bend your head down. Your head is not, your neck is not stiff. You may have convulsions. You may have um, confusion. So that's the, in the adult. And then you realize that the person has an, like maybe go to coma. That's an advantage of the, of the disease. Okay. Then for children, the child becomes the target or irritable, and then, as I said, there's what we call the anterior front tunnel. It's an opening at the front part of the baby, where that becomes bulging because of the high pressure. So those are the classical um, signs and symptoms you, you find when you have uh, meningitis. Then for prevention, because the, the organism is in the throat of an individual, and it's fed through respiratory droplets, when the person sneezes, or coughs, or maybe kisses somebody, then you transfer the bacteria to another person. Okay. But the issue is that the bacteria is heavy, it cannot travel long distances. So the rate of infection is depend on how close you are to the person. So when somebody is sneezing and coughing, try and move away. In that case, the, 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 the bacteria moves and it's blown away by then. Also, what you are saying is that the person who is sneezing and coughing must cough, cough, make sure you are cough, covering your mouth and nose with cloth or handkerchief. Right. So that you do not spread the infection. Then, if your, your room is very um, congested, you may have saying that you make sure you open your windows so that the, the air will blow the bacteria away. Okay. Then, in this era of dry weather, we are saying that people should drink a lot of water so that their, their throat is wet. It doesn't easily get broken up. And the first part is what else for the cardinal science and things that I mentioned. If you have any of it, immediately go to the nearest health facility. And treatment for meningitis is free. So there's no cost, there's no issue about um, finance here. Mm. If you confirm as a case of meningitis, you treat it free of charge in any health facility in Ghana. Okay. But, but there are no plans of any mass immunization, sort of? No. Because, uh, as I said, we are managing mainly pneumococcal meningitis. Mm. The main skill for management of pneumococcal, sorry, pneumococcal, pneumococcal meningitis is not vaccination. Okay. If it's pneumococcal, the CSM, then there is vaccination. All right. And let me say that there are several vaccines involved. Mm. There's the A, C, W, and K, five, and Y. All right. So you can even take, let's say, A and C. If your organism is W135, you are not getting it. Okay. So unless you're able to say that you have an infection due to this organism, then you go for that particular vaccine. But for now, you are managing imococa meningitis, which may approach is not vaccination. It's about any infection, an effective case management with antibiotics. All right. So we we say we are we are in an outbreak, is it? Yes, um the certain part of the country. Some districts went into the epidemic phase. Uh, now they are out. They, they are include when T, Pan, Hitman North, Hitman Municipal, Sunny West. They went into an outbreak. 
Let me explain that. Meningitis is measured using what we call thresholds because the disease is somehow endemic. You expect to have cases or sporadic cases in the course of the year. So you watch at it at a level that it doesn't cross that level. When it crosses, then you see that you are an alert or an epidemic phase. And this is dependent on the population of the locality. Okay. If you have a population of less than 30,000, then you are alert with two cases in a week. If it, then it becomes an epidemic when you have five cases in a week. All right. If you have a population of 30 to 100,000, mm. you are alert with three cases in a week and 10 cases in a week. So clearly, you watch the 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 the, the date and see are we hitting it there? And as I'm saying, looking at the district monitoring charts, all the cases that went to the epidemic have come down. They are no more in the epidemic, but we are still on high alert. All right. People will report and will be managed in the health facilities. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. C. Dubequin. He's head of disease and surveillance at the Ghana Health Service. Thank you very much indeed for your time. And uh, they are doing a very good job out there monitoring and um, surveying and making sure that uh, those who are contacting uh, the pneumococcal meningitis are giving the needed attention so that it doesn't spread further. But uh, somehow, uh, 50 deaths in less than a month, that's, that's quite, quite a number. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Dr. Esiedu. McQueen. And this is News File, this is your most authoritative news analysis show. And I return now to my guests uh, who are now uh, taking their seats in the studio. And we begin the discussions on the number of issues that have been tabled. Egbert Fable, Jr., he is private legal practitioner and the managing uh, editor of the Ghanaian Observer newspaper. James Kwabna Bonfe is the central committee member of the Convention People's Party that is electing its flag bearer. Today, uh, on Zayn Kroma, you heard about him. He's gone to court and filed a motion for an injunction on the process. Well, uh, as the CPP's chairman tells us, um, they have only been served with the notice and not an order of injunction. And so they have been advised to go ahead with the uh, ceremony today. So it should be going on and Mr. Bonfe is draped in the CPP colors. You can see all other CPP um, members <coughs> in similar outfits uh, getting to the International uh, Conference Center, is no. that it? Uh, trade, Fair trade, trade Fair Center, Atla. where Atla, where the program is happening. Also here is presidential staffer, uh, Sam George. He is also the um, the aspiring MP for the Ningo Pram Pram area. Uh, he just won that uh, slot not too long ago under uh, such a wave. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the show, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Great. Right. Um, just just uh, briefly, in a minute, uh, Egbert, what do you say about how we can help each other in this uh, meningitis uh, situation? Thousand. I think that it's a very, very you know, scary situation. Um, we have all, or most of us have been used to CSM, cerebrospinal meningitis. Right. I mean, growing up, if you wanted to go up north um, during the dry season, mm -hmm. you are alerted that, oh, there's a possibility that you can encounter this. So go for some shots, and then you can travel and go and enjoy whatever you want to go and go and come right. back. Now, from what is happening, this is a different strain. And from what the doctor said, I mean, there are several other, you know, strains. And from the readings that one has also done since the outbreak, um, it appears that, well, these are latent conditions, you know, or, or medical conditions which exist, except that they are triggered every now and then. In right. these times, I think that apart from the heat and what have you, you know, other factors have come in. But my worry is this. It appears that we are being more reactive than proactive. I mean, don't we have an early warning mechanism? that even at the onset of the dry season, the disease surveillance and what have you, divisions of the Ghana Health Service should have, you know, just alerted people that, look, we are in the curve or in a situation where we may have these triggers and so an outbreak is possible. Now, I mean, we used to um, know that CSM um, is prevalent 
um, in the three northern regions. Now it appears that you know it's come down to Brongahaf region. Yes, they are neighbors. I mean, I think I, if I'm not mistaken, even eastern region. Yes, eastern yes, region. It's come. So mm. I mean, yeah. it, it is beating for me our regular you know perceptions. Okay. To show that it is possible, and this is a nation where we, we move freely, and so somebody can travel up north or whichever to whichever yeah. point from whichever point of Ghana and return and yeah, come with this region. So, so one would expect mm -hmm. that even and, and, and I must commend you and for that matter, you know, this station and the program for, for this, you know, intervention that you've done with the doctor. I know other media houses are doing the same, right. but we need to escalate it. Okay. And let people know that when you're traveling, I mean I'm told that even kissing if you kiss an infected person or someone right. who has, it can, it can trigger because that. People need bacteria. to know. People yeah. need mm -hmm. to know because, you know, people, people like to kiss. <laughs> and uh, 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 it, can, it can bring all kinds of, okay. you know, all ramifications. Right. Thank you. That's supposed to be very brief. Now, uh, mm -hmm. some judge, what, what do you have to say? Um, from where you sit, do you think that a lot is being done to stem the tide so that we don't go beyond, you know, probably the 50 we have already recorded? Well, let me say a very good morning to our viewers listeners on, on radio and especially to the good people of Ningo Pram Pram where I started my thank you tour yesterday. The wound has been... You started a thank you tour yesterday? Yesterday, yeah. Okay. Um, in fact, I was pulled out of it to do this program. Okay. I'll be returning to the constituency but today. But doesn't affect um, the, the bottom line for me is you've had a fantastic interview with uh, Dr. Asiedu. And I must commend you. And Dr. Asiedu also spread a lot of light mm. on the, the, the meningitis scourge. Um, one thing I just want to add is the fact that um, speaking with a number of senior doctors on this matter, it is clear to me that um, necessarily an early warning signal could not necessarily have played a key role in this particular instance because this is not a traditional strain to Ghana. The CSM is what is a traditional strain. And so the early warning mechanisms were there to pick up all of those signals. Mm -hmm. However, when you're talking about the pneumococcal uh, uh, strain, which is a, 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 a pretty new strain here, okay, you have the challenge of us now realizing the challenges and then subsequent seasons we would have the, the mechanisms put in place. But I think the most important thing that we need to point out here is that um, not every case of meningitis that has gone to the clinics is pneumococcal. Mm -hmm. And and there's unfortunately there's been the media reportage has pr pretty much made it look like every meningitis case right now is pneumococcal. And I'll make a typical example for our viewers to get the point I'm making. The people who are having diarrhea and being rushed to hospitals today, but it is not being called a cholera outbreak. However, if we have a cholera outbreak, anybody who goes with diarrhea, even if it was not cholera, cholera related, and it was maybe because of another food poisoning <coughs> bacteria, it will be termed as cholera. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening here. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want us to, and that's why I'm saying that there should be no panic. Okay. Let's 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 be calm. Mm -hmm. um, the treatment for meningitis is is free in all public health institutions. The 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 the, the, the health service has put out a lot of information, and let me just read a bit of it for, because this is a public issue about how. Um, the, the symptoms. The symptoms are neck pain and neck stiffness, convulsions, confusion, that's the inability to think and act, vomiting, and sudden unexplained death. In children, there's the bulging of the anterior frontier. Um, yes, there's perfect treatment for it. Thankfully, uh, pneumococcal meningitis is bacterial. Mm. And so because it's bacterial, we can treat it with antibiotics. Okay. And so um, can we do vaccination? There are vaccines for certain types of meningitis, but not all can be used yeah, in our yes. yeah. And then how do we reduce the risk? And it's something which I tried to do yesterday with my team that when I, I insisted everybody drank water at a certain point in time because it was pretty dry. Mm. But drink plenty of water, avoid overcrowded areas. We should make sure our windows and doors are open. We should sleep in rooms with sufficient air passing through. Frequently wash your hands with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when sneezing or coughing. And please report to the nearest health facility if you have a fever, headache, or neck pain. As you do your thank you tour on the, in Ningo Pram Pram, I hope you pass on some of this information to your, your constituents as Definitely. you deal with them. Yes, um, yes, 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 yes. Bonfair, what do you say? Let me also say a very good morning to my viewers. Um, I'm sure my, my members, whom I would have uh, extended a special form of greetings to, are all 
gathered at the trade fair site. As yes, we some, speak. Of them, and some of them are listening as, as they go through. I am sure. I'm sure some are listening <laughs> to us on radio. And mm. so I would uh, say a very good morning and uh, wish them a comradely felicitation. Um, it is my hope that our Congress will come out uh, successful and that we will emerge with, uh, you know, the most fine person to lead the party as we go into the 2016 context. Mm -hmm. I would want to share in um, Egbert's um, position with respect to this being an irregular um, kind of disease or situation on our hands. Uh, but also to quickly add that it, it also raises the fundamental question of how much we invest into our research and development activities. I mean, for us to know that there is even a department within the Ghana Health Service devoted to disease and surveillance tells you that, yes, you, you, you need to surveil and engage in reconnaissance on, on your environment to be able to identify some irregular or, or strange diseases that may come within your system. And I, I must quickly add that diseases that relate to weather patterns have assumed a certain proportion because of variation in our weather system around the globe due to global warming and a whole lot of other um, you know, imagine climate, climate change situations. You, you will have normally times changing with, uh, you know, the climate situation not being the same as we traditionally knew them. And so we, we, I would want to say that we need to be more up and doing. Um, as the doctor explained, I, and I think that is what uh, Sam George sought to explain, that there are precautionary uh, measures that we can all undertake to ensure that, well, we either reduce the spread or reduce the severity and uh, possibly get treatment for it. I, I would want to suggest that um, as a country, we commit a lot, a little more, or if you like, something small mm. into research and development. I've never heard the budget of our country read where <laughs> research and development is even mentioned on a national scale for us to, to invest in. I mean, it's, it's a sad situation. And no organization, no system. Now, we are setting up a, res a research fund. I, I suppose it's almost done now. Is it? Yes. <coughs> Under the Ministry of Health Education, mm. which is what's supposed to replace the book and Well, but I'm, 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 I'm mm. talking... In general, maybe if you limit it to just education, mm. here we are talking about a health yeah. situation. But, but yeah, again, but I, I think the major issue is what we health. do with do the, we research the research and the outcome yeah. of the research Absolutely. that we do in our various uh, yeah. institutions, uh, universities. Yeah. Yes. Something, just briefly, I mean, I think that from the literature we've all read, mm. one of the things that uh, we need to use as a signpost is um, the fact that um, we should be wary of crowded places. Mm. Our markets are crowded places. Now also we have uh, students in the universities and um, in the secondary schools. They live densely in hotels, populated. densely populated places. What, what is being done, you understand, to go to such places and alert people that look, as much as possible, even though we find ourselves in this vortex of, of our population in hostels and um, dormitories and the rest, look, this is what is going on in the country. So just make sure that you get enough air as possible. And I, I mean, people should be told, right. I mean, look, You'll be surprised. People in secondary schools, uh, in particular, students don't have access to radio. So you'll be surprised that they may not be aware of what is going on. Right. And so headmasters and, you know, educational staff should quickly be alerted for them to pass, you know, these, these things down. I mean, when, when we're in uh, basic school growing up, when these things happen, you used to have health officials come around and come yeah, and talk to us. Yeah, I understand the, the, yeah, they're, the, they're the relevant that. outfits of the that. Ghana Health Service mm -hmm. is doing this across the across country, the country. Right. particularly wow. in areas where, you know, they've been hardest hit. That, that is why we need so, to... So your concern has already we, been well taken. No, no because, that, I, we, because we need, I spoke to somebody who is in school this morning and was asking the person whether 
in their school in Cape Coast, whether they've 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 been told about this. And he said no. Okay. They, they, you see, the, the, the authorities may not necessarily want to create fear oh. and panic, but mm. we want to put in place the right mechanisms in the hostels and dormitories well, to ensure that they don't have a crowd. I, I like to look at it from the point that maybe it's an ongoing exercise. It just began. Yeah, so definitely. those those also students may be rich in due course. Uh, by which time mm. they, no, they, they are have, regional the right, regional well, teams. Right. Well. Right. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, now, 